What's up guys, my name is Ace, and lately with Modern Warfare, I've been seeing a lot of people say that they feel that skill-based matchmaking has been reduced in Modern Warfare. And honestly, over the past couple weeks, I've kind of felt like something changed as well. As a result, it's time for round two of the skill-based matchmaking testing for this game. If you guys missed the first round of skill-based matchmaking testing, I will leave that link down below. I encourage you to check it out. In that round of testing, I collected data and Drifter collected data, and then we combined that data and worked together to get the results. And basically what we found is there does appear to be relatively strict skill-based matchmaking in Modern Warfare, but it doesn't seem to have much to do with your global stat. So like your kill-death ratio since you got Modern Warfare until now, that's not really relevant. What really matters based on the results of our testing previously is your recent performance in the past several matches. Now we did a test with the past five matches. I've been seeing a lot of people claim that it is exactly five matches. We don't know for sure if it's your past five matches, but it's just in general, your recent performance in the past several games seems to determine the skill level of the lobby that you're placed in. So if you're doing really well for several games, then it's going to put you in harder lobbies against other people that have been playing really well for the past several of their games. On the flip side of that, if you're really struggling and not playing very well for several games in a row, it will end up giving you easier lobbies to make you feel better about yourself and make you stick around with the game. Now, like I said, in today's video, we're going to be going over the second round of testing. I'm going to try to keep my opinion out of it a little bit more than the first one. I will say that I am not a fan of strict skill-based matchmaking in Call of Duty public matches. I don't feel it has any place in Call of Duty public matches, but if you want to see the more detailed reasons as to why I don't like it, I will once again refer you back to the first skill-based matchmaking video. I just don't want to repeat myself too much in this one. But let's get into the data for the second round of testing. Of course, I will leave linked down in the description below a link to the raw data from our testing so you guys can check that out for yourself. But my girlfriend Enya was a huge help for this, so big thank you to her. She helped enter a lot of the data in these charts. And basically what we did is we just looked at the recent performance stats because, like I said, that's what we determined really matters. Global stats are basically meaningless in this game. So with our testing, we looked at the performance from my account, which is a higher skill account that generally has very solid performance over time. We also looked at the past five matches of a friend of ours, Rockhead, and he would fall right around the realm of an average player in this game. And then finally, we looked at my dummy account. It's my second account that I have specifically played to reach a target of looking like a very low skill player or a well below average player. So what we did with each of these accounts is we hopped into five games each and we found the recent performance of every player that we ran into in the past five matches. With this, we looked at the kill death ratio stats from each of the past five games for each of these players. Because in this game, that is the stat that is most relevant across game modes. Score per minute is likely also a factor in skill-based matchmaking, but since it varies so widely between game modes, it wouldn't really be relevant when looking at the data. So kill death ratio is the best we've got when it comes to looking at that. That's another misconception I've seen since my last skill-based matchmaking video. A lot of people are claiming that it's all about kill death ratio, and it's highly unlikely that it is all about kill death ratio. It's more likely a mix of several stats. It's just, like I said, kill death ratio is the best visible stat that we have. But that's how the data collection process went. Now let's have a look at the results of this data collection for the second round of testing. For me on my main account, my average kill death ratio over the past five games before this testing was 3.68. The average kill death ratio of the past five games for all of the players that I ran into within the five games was 1.61, which is well above average. Keep in mind, if it would truly mix lobbies, the kill death ratio would statistically fall right around one. And my lobbies were a 1.61 average kill death ratio. Then with Rockhead's account, like I said, he's generally a pretty average player, although he did happen to go off in his most recent game. He actually had a 7 KD in his most recent game. I think it was just seven kills in one death or zero deaths or something like that. But in either case, that did pull his KD average over the past five games up to a 2.32. And the average KD in his lobbies was 1.47. So a little bit lower than mine, but still pretty high. And I think that does have to do with the fact that his recent performance was actually quite solid for him. Finally, we had a look at my dummy account, which is called Exclusive. And with this one, I purposely played five team deathmatch games 
and aim to get roughly 7 kills and 10 deaths in those matches. As a result, my KD over the past 5 games with that account was 0.68 because there were a couple times where I died one more time than I should have, just because I couldn't quite hide from the enemy players until the end of the game. And the average KD over the past 5 games of the players I was running into was 1.09. So you can definitely see a correlation here, and when I did a correlation analysis, I actually got a correlation coefficient of 0.979, which is a very strong correlation. What this means is no, it doesn't look like skill-based matchmaking has been reduced at all based on this testing. Of course, there are definitely some limitations to this testing and data collection and everything like that. But to the best of our abilities, this is the data that we have, and skill-based matchmaking is still quite strong when looking at your recent performance in Modern Warfare. Now, another thing that I thought would be interesting to analyze, we also collected the rank of every player that was in the lobbies, because this is shortly after Christmas, and I wanted to see how likely it is to run into a quote-unquote Christmas noob. So what I did is I just counted the number of players that I ran into on each of these accounts over the past five games that was less than rank 55. With my main account, within 5 games, I ran into 8 players that were less than rank 55. On Rockhead's account, I ran into 11 players that were less than rank 55. And on my dummy account, I ran into 29 players that were less than rank 55. So if you've been wondering where all the Christmas noobs are, that's where they're hiding. They're hiding in the low skill lobbies generally. It's also worth mentioning that the Christmas noobs, or quote unquote Christmas noobs that I was running into on my main account, they weren't actually noobs. They had new accounts, maybe they just got the game for Christmas, but the vast majority of the ones I ran into are not new to Call of Duty based on their stats. They are actually very solid players, they just happen to be very low level. Whereas the Christmas noobs I was running into on my dummy account, those were actual Christmas noobs. They were the ones that clearly didn't really know what they were doing. But those are the results when it comes to rank, however, there's also one more thing I wanted to test now that we've basically confirmed that skill-based matchmaking is still around and as strong as ever. And this is a big question that I've been getting, and I've kind of been wondering myself, what happens when a high-skill player joins up with a low-skill player in a party? Do you end up in high-skill lobbies, low-skill lobbies, or does it try and average it out and you get somewhere in between? And also, do your lobbies depend on which one of those players is the party host? So with this, we use my main account as well as my dummy account, and I hopped into five games with each of those accounts hosting the party. When my main account was hosting, keeping in mind my KD over the past five games was 3.68, the average kill-death ratio of the lobbies that we found was 1.81. So they were actually a little bit better on average than what I was running into when I was just searching with my main account. Then for the next five games, my dummy account hosted the lobby, but my main account joined up with that player and the average recent KD of the players in those lobbies was 1.23, so not nearly as high as when I hosted with my main account. So this is relatively basic testing, and it does use two extremes, like a pretty high skill account versus a very low skill account, but there does seem to be a trend that the player that's hosting the lobby does have some impact, at least to an extent, on what kinds of games you're getting into. So this is some pretty valuable information because one of the biggest complaints with strict skill-based matchmaking this year with Modern Warfare is for a lot of skilled players, their friends simply don't want to play with them because they end up in really highly skilled lobbies that they can't compete in. As a result, that has caused a lot of high-skilled players to not play the game nearly as often or completely drop out of the game because none of their friends want to play with them. It looks like, based on our data, if you take the lowest skilled player in your lobby or the person that has at least performed the worst over the past several games, have them host the game and things should get at least a little bit easier. Now I do want to point out that it doesn't completely drag it down so that we were getting nothing but Christmas noobs and it's still generally going to be much harder lobbies for my dummy account than they would get if they were just playing solo. But it at least seems like it tried to average it out a little bit when the lower skill account was hosting the match, whereas it didn't seem to do that at all when the higher skill account was hosting the match. There you have it, that's the results of this testing. Like I said, it wasn't quite as detailed of a test as the initial skill-based matchmaking testing we were doing. This was designed more so just as a quick checkup to see if anything had changed based on the data that we found. And it looks like, no, nothing has changed. Now that does have me thinking though, like I personally thought that something felt different 
over the past couple weeks. And a lot of people have been feeling the same way. I think what is going on is instead of skill-based matchmaking being adjusted, I feel like the connections are starting to stabilize now. And this is something that typically happens, especially with Infinity Ward games from what I remember. I remember the first month or two of Infinite Warfare was really rough when it comes to connections. The time to kill versus the time to die just felt terrible. Like I would die in the blink of an eye, but it takes me a normal amount of shots to get a kill on an enemy. I will say I've been finding lately while playing Modern Warfare, even though I haven't been playing a ton, I have been finding fewer of these situations. It still happens, and I still run into the odd player where it just feels like they kill me instantly, but it takes me a normal amount of shots to kill them. But the frequency of those situations has been reduced based on my anecdotal experience. So it looks like skill-based matchmaking hasn't changed, but perhaps the connections are starting to stabilize. I don't really know for sure, but all I will say is, for me at least, the game has started feeling better over the past couple weeks, and at least that's a start. That's a good sign. So I know a bunch of you guys have quit this game and haven't touched it in quite a long time and you're probably watching this video wondering if things changed and it's okay to come back. I would still encourage you to come back, give it a shot, and just see if at least the connections feel a little bit better for you. Skill-based matchmaking may not have changed, but if the connections at least stabilize, then it does make for a much better experience. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on the round two of skill-based matchmaking testing. This is something that I think I want to periodically check in on every month or two, or if there's a general consensus in the community that something has changed in the background, then perhaps I will retest it because it does seem to make sense that skill-based matchmaking will be toned down over time now that Christmas has passed. The reason for this is strict skill-based matchmaking is a very effective tool for hooking new players early on because you're protecting those players. You're keeping them in their own protected lobbies, keeping them in their safe spaces, and that works great at first, but as casual players start to get better and they start to end up in those higher skill lobbies, then they're going to start to see the problem that many of us have been seeing since the beginning, and at that point, that's likely where they're going to fall off playing the game. From here on out, there probably won't be a massive influx of brand new players because the last massive influx is usually at Christmas time, and therefore, as time goes on, in general, the player base is going to get better and better and better, and they're going to start to realize the issues more and more. So I know there's a lot of players out there that are right around average, or they're not very good at the game, but they're still having an excellent time with it, and they don't really understand the complaints from many of us longtime players that are generally more skilled. And the simple reason for this is they're effectively playing a completely different game than we are. Once they start reaching a certain threshold, they're going to see the issues, and that's going to be a big problem. So I do think it is something they will start cutting back on in the future. But like I said, that's why I want to continue checking in from time to time as time goes on. And with that, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about these results? Were you surprised to see that skill-based matchmaking wasn't touched? Or is this pretty much right in line with your experience? Just let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.